right here. Perfect. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm Tamara. I'm with Elderworks, and I'm going to ask you all to put your phones on silent so they don't interrupt the speaker today. And our speaker today is Joyce Mahoney. Um, she has her CCRA and her APRS and is the Regional Vice President of Consultant and Memory Therapist at Belmont Village Senior Living on, and one of our gold sponsors. Joyce has over 25 years experience in senior and memory care <coughs> services and has been with Belmont Village for more than 19 years. She provides consultation and support services for the central and eastern community, health care professionals and caregivers. Has developed programs designed for mental fitness initiatives, developed quality insurance protocol and tools, uh, which are used in the Vanderbilt based consultation of program evaluation and teaches dementia training and education for courses. So today I'd like to um, welcome Joyce Mahoney. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for that introduction. That was lovely. I don't want to stand in front of the screen, so I'm just going to kind of move this over a little bit. Everyone can hear me all right? Okay. Welcome. Welcome to the expo. Everyone's having a great time today? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for being here, and we're going to talk about successful aging. And that is kind of a mouthful, because what does that mean, successful aging? But we're going to talk together about what it means to age successfully at every decade of life. But also, the question out in our industry is that can you age successfully even if there's a, some level of disability, physical or cognitive disability? And the answer is yes. It is yes. And it is about living your best life and whatever that looks like. Okay. So let's take a look at some of the uh, goals for today. So we're just gonna talk about aging in America, okay? Uh, we are also gonna talk about stretching your mind a bit, uh, mental stimulation for the brain, because it's not just about keeping the body healthy, it's about keeping the brain healthy and vital as well, because again, they work in sync, right? Okay, right, okay. so. Anyway, I always like to start out with one question, is how many of you in this room would like to live to be a centenarian? Raise your hand. A hundred. Who wants to live to be a hundred? Raise it high, raise it high. There you go, all right, all right. Okay, now I'm typically outnumbered when I ask that question, but I always like to raise my hand. Now those of you who did not raise your hand, why not? Why not? To be able to live all the way up to or into the 10th decade of life truly is a privilege, but how do we make that happen, right? That's the question. And, the, and tell me if you agree or disagree that many people who didn't raise their hand, those who didn't, there's a lot of questions as to, well, I don't want to live that to that age because I don't want to age and be frail or have any kind of impairments, right? And so that kind of scares us a little bit. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah it, it does, it does. So sometimes we can help dispel some of the myths of aging and again, about living our best life. And that's very individualized, okay? So when we take a look at how we age, the ideal length of life or the median ideal lifespan is about 90 years old in America. Now that will range from person to person a little bit depending where you live and how you've lived your life up until now. But about 11 years, it's about 11 years longer than the current average life expectancy in the US, which is about 78.7. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting closer to the 78 piece and that's not long enough. I wanna be around for a little while longer, right? I mean, we have our families, we have our friends, I have grandchildren, I wanna be around for them, right? Now, when I tell my daughter that, you know, she just kind of rolls her eyes, like, oh my God, how long? I said, oh, for a long time, yeah. Okay, so when we take a look at how we age, the span of life, when we take a look in the 1900s, you see the pyramid, the pyramid is a pyramid and it narrows at the top, so the older we get, 
life expectancy starts shortening, right? Which kind of makes sense, right? Now, on the one side of the pyramid is males, and on the other side is the females. So in the 1900s, it's relatively balanced, right? Wouldn't you say? So let's fast forward and go to the 21st century. That pyramid certainly has changed, right? Now, again, males and females. Now, I have to say, gentlemen, I'm very sorry to tell you, but your female counterparts, counterparts are still living longer than you are, OK? But the good news for both genders, for all of us, is that on average, we are living longer, as you can see, because it's not a pyramid. It's really more squared off, right? So we're actually living longer in the seventh, eighth, ninth, and even up to the 10th decade of life. We're living longer. But now the caveat to this is that not only are we living longer, but we're living better and healthier. Does anyone know why? Why would we be living longer now and better? Say it again. Modern medicine, yes. Why else? Technology. A healthy promotions, healthy living, healthier choices. Technology. Technology, right? Yeah, we can kind of Google anything nowadays, right? And we kind of get the answers to things. So we're becoming more educated and more knowledgeable about how we need to live our life. Okay. So now, for decades. Okay, for many decades, psychologists have been working to unlock the secrets of successful aging. Now, I have to tell you, we're still working on that. We are still working, okay? Now, we're going to embrace a successful aging philosophy and a framework to maximize our best self. And as I say that, people ask, well, again, what does that look like? So we are gonna get into some of the specifics and what we need to do. And I will say, as I continue talking, some of these things are going to be very familiar to you, okay? But I am going to make some emphasis on certain areas. Now, such as embracing a standard of living. Now, we also, the researchers, are taking a look at the connection with how we live and the connection to our emotional well being and happiness, the happiness factor, the happiness quotient, okay? Now, how many of you can say you're happy? Now, nobody's happy all the time, but I mean, you know, for the most part, are you happy and you're enjoying your life? Okay, that's a good start, okay? But there is a huge correlation between how we live our life, our emotional well being, our happiness factor, and again, because that plays a key factor into how we motivate ourselves into living a more robust and vital life. Okay, versus those who may not be as happy on that bar, okay, are less motivated and less driven to change their lives or to change some habits into healthier habits. Okay, make sense so far? All right. Okay, so the outlook, your outlook and your attitude, kind of the glass is half empty or half full, is definitely going to influence how you age, how you age. Now, how many of you know someone that's about your own age, but you're aging quite differently? Right? Okay. Whether better, not better. Okay. Yeah. You see, there's differences in your lifestyle, different factors, different elements that you may be incorporating. But again, you can be of the same age. Someone can be 65, 70 years old, but their lifestyle is quite different, but their appearance is different, their energy is different, right? Their physical stature is different, right? Sound familiar? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we go back to talking about happiness, how would you define your happiness? So when we take a look at your joy and what influences you in your life, does, does that attitude, okay, or that emotional well-being has that changed when you were in your 40s? Then you're in your 50s? How about 60s, 70s, 80s? Has it changed? Probably, right? Because typically about every decade of life, your attitude and your outlook will change and it kind of alters your view on how you're living your life and how you feel about that, right? Now, typically the reason why for that is 
more about living life, having life experiences, and becoming more knowledgeable and mature about how you want to live your life, okay? So that tends to change from one decade to the next. Is it sounding familiar yet? Kind of a little bit, right? Okay, so successful aging. Now, when you look at it, when you start taking a look at numbers, when we retire, people live about one third of their lives in retirement years, so beyond the age of 65, one third. Those are a lot of years. So by 2030, 10% of the population will be over 65 years old. Now, we also need to reimagine and remodel our life course and live a more active lifestyle. So how many of you would say you live an active lifestyle? Raise your hand. Oh God, this is a stellar group, I knew it. Okay, that, that one you have to really raise high and proud. Okay, so the reason I ask some of these questions is because those of you who are very aware and concerned about your health tend to take a more active approach to your aging, okay? So again, you know, when you start looking at retirement years, do you get more concerned? And if you are, that's a good thing. Okay, so again, if you notice that, uh oh, I'm not feeling well or I'm not moving as well as I used to, the question is, is that normal aging or is there something going on and do I need to fix it, make a little change? Yes or no, okay? Now, achieving a life within the three, three strands of happiness, so I'm gonna co correlate the happiness factor with the aging factor, okay? Now, I just wanna give you some things to think about, okay? Some things to think about. Strand number one is pleasure, okay? So this is your outlook and how you view your life. Do you have pleasure in your life? Meaning, do you have something to do? So if you're not working, typically like maybe you used to, you're in your retirement years, do you have pleasure? So again, in other words, are you enjoying your life? Are you socializing with other people on a regular basis, okay? Because we humans, we need other humans. We need those connections, right? And we really felt this during COVID. Remember during the pandemic when we were all isolated? Humans need other humans in order to thrive and exist well, okay? So you need to have some joy in your daily life. What about purpose? Do you feel you have a sense of purpose in your life? A sense of purpose, someone to love, something to love. How many of you have pets? Yeah, I love pets, okay, all right. So there has to be a, a sense of purpose or you feel that you have a sense of purpose and opportunities within your daily life and that you look forward to as well. Using your gifts and talents, having a passion and an interest in something. And again, here's the thing, you can have a passion and an interest on something, but unless you take the action steps to actually do it and engage in those passions, that's a big difference between the two. So you've got to take those action steps. Now, the other strand, the third strand is pride. Now, I'm not talking about ego, but pride, knowing that you have something to give and look forward to, sometimes giving back and being helpful, being connected to someone or something that you have meaning in your life and you can actually give back maybe to someone else, right? It feels good to do something nice for other people, okay? That kindness factor. Okay? And again, daily routines to increase your satisfaction and really your sense of accomplishment. Because as we get older, you need to have, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, a feeling of being capable as we age, right? We know in our 20s and our 30s and our 40s, you know, in those years, we did so many different things. We were young and active, okay? But as we age, Yes, normal aging, our body changes and our mind changes as well. But as we age, we need to feel capable as human beings, right? Yeah, you need to feel capable. You need to have that confidence and that self-esteem and to be, be, be able to reassure ourselves that we can still do so many things that are of interest and pleasure to ourselves. That's so important. Okay, now your happiness Okay, so fast forward. Let's fast forward five years, 10 years, 
15, 20 years, depending on your age, okay? How will you define successful aging and how do you define happiness? This is where you kind of have those little talks with yourself. You know, am I happy? What am I gonna do today? But make sure you answer yourself. Don't start talking to yourself, but you know what I mean. Okay, um, but the question is, has your definition changed over the years? And as we already said, it probably has. I know mine has, okay? Now, are some of the elements the same? Do you have good physical health, a strong body, a strong mind? Are you feeling independent? Because that's a big one, right? To be independent and continue doing things that we always have on our own, right? Now we know we have family and friends who can probably be there and assist us with some things, but oh gosh, no. We're just too proud to ask for help. You know? So the independence piece is very, very important to all of us, okay? So again, your projection of what happiness is going to look like for you, again, in the seventh, eighth, ninth, decade or 10th decade of life. Has it changed or will it remain the same? It's up to you, okay? Now, here's the thing. Put aside your limitations, okay? Has anyone in this room said, oh no, I can't do that anymore? Oh no, I used to do that, but no, not anymore. No, I'm too old to do that. Oh gosh, no, right? Okay. I think if you don't shake your head, yes, you're lying. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So again, put aside your limitations because here's the thing. As we age, yes, all of this changes, right? Okay. But maybe there's things that are of interest of you, uh, for you, okay? So maybe you still follow through on some of those interests, but you just adapt and modify it a little bit so you can continue having that pleasure. Okay, so again, no more limitations, all right? Chronic conditions, okay? Is there anyone in this room who has not had an ache or a pain at some time or another? <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't raise it, you're lying, no. <laughs> okay, yes, of course we have. Have we all had an injury of some sort in your life? Yeah, okay. The big difference is, is that we need to kind of have those self-talks and motivate ourselves. How can I get through this? How can I get better, okay? How can I be the best me, all right? So again, don't look at it as an, as an obstacle, but an opportunity for a new way of doing things and approaching your life. That's the key. Don't get in your own way. And we got in our country as American population, we have the tendency to get in our own way and then we kind of say, oh, I wish I was like that. Well, you can't be, okay? No obstacles, all right? So now looking forward, not backwards, don't look what I used to do, but what I will do, okay? Focus on what we can still do, what can be done, okay? So when it talks about your own sense of personal peace, Again, what gives you your pleasure? What is your passion? And I'm gonna repeat, repeat some of these same things over and over again, so I instill this. But again, having a positive outlook on everything that we do. So what if it's not the way we used to do it? Well, who cares? Who cares? You know, maybe you used to run. Well, maybe it's not running, but maybe now you're walking. The fact is, is that you're still moving and it's a healthy approach to life, right? Okay, I go on a walking path and I see. I mean, there was there, last weekend, there was a lady, she had to be probably, well, she was, she was older than I was, I know, I could tell, but, oh my God, that woman, she can run circles around me. So I thought, oh God, if she can do it, I can do it. Well, I almost passed out, but I tried it. <laughs> you know. Anyway, okay, so again, aging equals an ultimately positive way of thinking, okay? So again, life has increased over the past decades. We humans are living longer, but we are living healthier for the same points that we mentioned earlier. We're much more ed educated, but we still need to hold on to that drive and that enthusiasm to keep us going every day, every month, every year, right? And be our best, okay? Um, now, 
your creative capacity, okay, I loved this one, still maintains between the ages of 60 and 80. The creativity capacity, your creative elements. So again, the way you think, right? Kind of the outside of the box kind of thinking. Your ability to cre uh, be creative is still peaking between the ages of 60 or 60 and 80. I think that's amazing. You're more, we're probably more creative than 20 and 30 year olds, right? No offense to anyone who's 20 or 30, but you know, the creativity is still there. Over 11 million people over the age of 65 still enjoy working. You see, it's just a different, you know, you think about it, you know, I look at my children and it's, oh, I gotta go to work today. You know, it's that kind of a thing. You know, the older I get, I have to enjoy what I do and we're passionate about it, right? You see how our, our mindset changes, okay? I don't have to go to work, but I go because I'm passionate about it and I enjoy it. It's not only what I do, it's who I am. You see, the mindset starts changing because again, our minds are much more mature and we have more life experience. So our attitude changes toward different things, right? Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine doing something I didn't enjoy. No, right? Not that there ever, never is, but you know. Anyway, okay, the key to longevity is lifestyle. Now, you've heard that before, right? You wanna live healthy, you've gotta have the right lifestyle, and that is true but only 30% is determined by genetics, so your lifestyle. So some people will say, well, no, 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 genetics, you know, my parents or my siblings, blah, 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 and you hear the stories, right? So it's like, no, 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 that's, that's, that's gonna be my life. No, uh-uh. You might come from the same gene pool, yes, okay? However, you still have the ability to change your own outcome. So even in my family, you know, with my parents, oh gosh, there's glaucoma, diabetes, heart disease, uh, dementia. Um, and I, I, I just decided I am not doing that. I refuse, I refuse to get those things. And here's my brother who looks at me, and he's like, oh yeah, okay, you've got the magic sauce, okay. Um, but no, the way you can do that is, again, identifying your lifestyle to help prevent some of these illnesses and chronic diseases, okay? So again, my parents' outcome does not have to be mine, okay? So 30% is genetic, 70%, and actually these numbers are changing, it really is over 70% of lifestyle will dictate how you age. <coughs> over 70%, God, that's a ginormous number. Over 70% and how you live your life will dictate how you age, okay? So over 70%, so who's in control here? You are, right? Okay, you are. Choose to be happy, studies show that more people report feeling happier as they get older than their young counterparts. Do you feel, at whatever age you are now, do you feel that you are happier now than you were 10, 20 years ago? Yeah? Yes. Overall, overall. Again, nobody's happy all the time, but, yes ma'am? You feel more blessed. You appreciate things more. Right, right, yeah. You don't, you, you tend not to take some things for granted, right? Yeah, again, here's life ex uh, experience. You see, you get a little wiser the older you get. See, there's caveats, there's, there's pluses to getting older. See, I like it, I like it. All right, now, you choose to be happy, but again, here's the older you get, you are happier than your younger counterparts, um, but actually, specifically, this starts happening after the age of 50. After the age of 50, so kind of think about your own life. I remember, you know, like in your 30s, it's like, oh, you know, 20s and 30s, you have your family, maybe married or children and career and whew, it's rush, 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 right? You're building your life, right? 40s, it kind of starts calming down a little bit because, you know, I'm, I, I'm good, I got this, right? Then you hit that fifth decade, you know, you, you hit, oh God, I'm turning 50. For a minute, you know, it's like, whew, 50, oh my gosh. Okay, 
but you just build a higher level of confidence and you have greater self-esteem and confidence within yourself that you feel better about yourself, hence the correlation to being happy with yourself and where you are. You see, you see the connection? So it kind of starts in your 50s, 50-ish, okay? Now, for some, real fun studies show that as you age, I love this one, your body sweats less. I know, I thought that was so hilarious. Now, women, I, you know, I am not gonna get into those details, but um, yeah, and maybe after a certain point, and I'll leave it at that, okay? But um, I, I think that one was funny, okay? Um, so much for getting some research also suggests that the older you get, the more competitive you become. What do you think about that one? It's true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, you can become you have kind of a little edge there, you know. It's just like nothing's going to take me down. I'm going to keep going and do this. I mean, look at me on the walking trail, you know. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to let her get in front of me, you know. And I tried to speed it up a little bit, right? So, yeah, you have the tendency to get a little more competitive. And the reason being is because we need to validate ourselves and say, you know what, I am good where I'm at. I am good at 50, I am good at 60, I am good at 70. So again, kind of competing with your own self, but just kind of you know, taking a stance in your own life and then with the people that are in your life and say, you know what, I'm great, okay? All right, now here's some lifestyle elements. Now these are from, have you ever heard of the Blue Zones? Okay, and I think there's a documentary on Netflix now with uh, Daniel Buettner and um, uh, National Geographic, okay? So I love you, if you haven't seen it, you know, I, I recommend watching it, it was great. But these elements right here, these lifestyles, called the Power Nine, and so here are some of lifestyle elements that you can incorporate into your own life. Now, here's the thing, Nine, this is a long list, okay? I will say, if you change one thing, and you don't even have to change it drastically, if you change even one tiny little thing, I promise you it will make a difference versus not changing anything, right? So start small, don't go gung-ho, because again, the whole idea is to be consistent and have some sustainability with these life elements, right? So start small and chip away at it, okay? But again, one of them we were just talking about walking, it's all about moving naturally. You don't need to belong to a gym. If you do, fantastic, but you don't have to belong to, uh, to a gym. Research is saying that you need to move your body continuously throughout the day in more natural movements. Just walking, you don't have to run a marathon or even walk a marathon, okay? Move naturally. Again, we have the tendency to sit a lot, so movement is key to our health, okay? So think about it. You sleep all night long, you're stretched out, right? And sometimes we get up in the morning, we go make our coffee, and we sit, right? Well, then, okay, I need to run some errands, but then you go in your car and you sit again, you see? Now, okay, you walk around a little bit, but then you go from walking a little to sitting. So think about how sedentary we are during the day. And then the funny thing, here's another little thing, is that I'm watching television one night, right, and commercial comes on. Honest to God, we live in, a, a, in an age of convenience, okay? Your food is delivered, your groceries are delivered, all you have to do is go on your device and order everything, and it literally is, here, it's, right, it's given right to you, right? Okay, then I saw this commercial and I thought, oh, for Pete's sake, we don't even have to bend down and put our shoes on. You just have to slip these shoes on, right? <laughs> like sketch your shoes or something, okay? You don't even have to bend down and put your shoes on anymore. I thought, oh, for Pete's sake. So be careful on the convenience. Trust me, I love convenience, but too much convenience will inhibit the movement. So you need to move naturally bend, move, those types of things, okay? So natural movements. Find your purpose, we already talked about that. But again, when you look at these things, when you add this onto your lifestyle list and you actually incorporate these, the question is always, uh, 
can you add life, more years to your life, so expand life expectancy. And if you do and you're consistent, okay, and really, really make this part of your life, you can add years to your life expectancy. It's actually incredible. It's been proven. Research, okay? So again, the purpose you can, it, it is worth up to seven years of extra life expectancy. So this is about not just living or existing, it's about thriving. It's about thriving and living the life that you have because you only get one, right? So do it your best, okay? Now, downshift, decrease stress. Okay, I'm working on this one. I'm working on this one. You do have to have time to just kind of relax and chill a little bit. But, you know, this doesn't mean taking a three-hour nap in the afternoon, but just kind of gathering your thoughts and just kind of collecting your thoughts and just being sometimes. Just be. Maybe it's listening to some music. Maybe it is meditating. You know, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's looking at the grandbaby's, you know, photos or even talking to one of them, FaceTime, okay? That's downshifting, just kind of slow down sometimes in life, okay? Now, uh, what's the other one? 80% rule, okay? Eating. Oh, gosh. Okay, how many of you, how many, well, okay, everyone's going to raise their hand. We've all had moments where we've just stuffed ourselves because food is so good, right? Especially during the holidays, right? A few more months and we're going to be kind of, oh, my God, here's all the holiday foods, right? But now the 80% rule is that you only eat up until you're 80% full. Now, Asian communities um, in other countries, uh, more like uh, Okinawa, more in Japan, they follow the 80% rule, and they only eat up until they're 80% full. So they don't get that feeling of bloat and just overstuffed, okay, which is definitely healthier for you, okay? Um, the plant slant, okay? All right, here's the thing. This, this, this one, okay, no drive throughs I know. Oh, no, I know. I know. I know. No, no drive through. See, that's the convenience thing. Okay. Okay. When you eat food, this is what you should follow. Again, trust me, I like pizza and stuff myself, you know, and I make a mean salsa. I, I love all that. But you should eat foods that come from the ground, a bush, a tree, or a vine. Foods in their natural state, not man made not processed, not foods that can sit on a shelf for God knows how many weeks or months. That is not real. It's not food. It's man-made. It's not real. So eat as much as you want if it comes from the ground, a bush, a tree, or a vine. Okay? It comes from the earth. That's what you want to have more of. Okay? Meat in moderation. Also spiritual belonging, whatever that might mean to you, if there's a spiritual connection for you. And loved ones first, a family life, right? Family or friends, everyone's family dynamics is different. Friendships are different from person to person. So whatever that looks like for you, keep close to your friends. And then your friends have the tendency to motivate you to and stay social, okay? Stay socially connected. So very important to have those connections. Again, the social engagement, it supports healthy behaviors. Uh, again, avoid smoking. And again, loneliness. There's also a myth that when we get older, I'm going to be alone and I'm going to be lonely. No, on the contrary. There's so many. I mean, look at today. Look at all the people here. You're here, right? You're staying connected within the community. That's what you need to continue to do. So social engagements. Now, I will add this, with the social engagements and with the friendships, okay, you need to focus on staying connected with like-minded people and positive-minded people. Those are the people that motivate you and not bring you down. Kind of stick with the people who are the glasses half empty. So I know I do, but is there anyone in the room who has someone in their life who might be the glasses half empty? kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah, we all, we, okay, is there anyone who doesn't have one? Yeah, right, okay. So, no, keep them in your life. Do not dismiss them. No, 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 I'm not saying that. 
but sometimes you just want to limit your time. You know, I know one of my friends, it's like, oh my God, I gotta go home, I can't take it anymore, right? It has a tendency to bring you down a little bit, okay? So again, here's that happiness quotient, keep that up. Stay connected, but surround yourself with more positivity, okay? All right, and again, this is just another version of the Power Nine, and you can find these online as well, so you can even just Google that, okay? All right, okay. So, where do you begin, all right? Now, this is kind of your little homework pieces when you go home, so later tonight, you know, you can, oh, even in the, uh, um, the blue zones, yeah, have that glass of wine. You see, have the red wine or the white wine. Red wine is, is recommended. But um, as you're having your glass of wine or your beverage this evening, whatever that is, here's where you start writing things down. And the reason I say write things down is because you're more apt to commit and take action on something if you write it down and you actually see it in print, okay? So it's a good exercise to do that. Write down what gives you joy. What gives you joy? Or even sometimes in the workplace when I go to work, at the end of the day, I pull some of our staff together and I say, give me three things today that were great three things. You should be able to come up with at least three things that gave you joy, that went well, things that were just good. I'm not saying perfect, but good. Okay? So take an action step and do this every day. Try it for the next week. Okay? Try it. Or do it with someone. Partner with a friend and do it with a friend. Okay? And write down things that brought you fun and joy. Okay? You gonna do it? What about gratitude? That falls under this as well. Yes. Yeah. So she asked, what about gratitude? Should we write down things that we're grateful for? Absolutely, 100%. Yes. And the things that you're grateful for also bring you joy, because I'm grateful for this. Yes. It gives you some fulfillment. Yes, 100%. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, yes, this wonderful event, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, all the people who are responsible, Elder Works, and who put this event together, right? Mm -hmm. That's something to be grateful for today, right? It brought us all together. Yeah. All right. So here's the next one. Who makes you feel happy? Who? Are you thinking of someone right now? Who makes you happy? Who makes you laugh? Who gives you joy? Right? So identify who those people are because, again, those are the people who are going to motivate you and support you, right? So, again, identify um, who those people are and what is it they do that gives you joy? What are they doing to make you happy? So, you need to make a conscious effort to identify why and what that looks like, okay? Other than just Oh, I have, you know, Mary who's my friend and oh, I just love being around her. Well, why? What is it about Mary? You see? Okay? So get more in detail. Okay? Can you say yes to fun? How many of you get to say yes to fun? Okay, we need to see more hands up on this one. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean <laughs> Okay, lie to me if you have to. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely say yes to fun. Oh my God, that's what living is all about as well. And yes, outside of our day-to-day -day responsibilities, you may have family and households to take care of. I get it, absolutely. But again, you deserve to have some fun, right? Need to identify what that fun looks like for you. And maybe it's sitting out on a beautiful day like today, right? Or this past week that we've had these beautiful days. Get a good book or get a magazine, something, right? Go for that walk or call a friend, you know? Go to an animal shelter, go pet all the puppies and kittens, right? Oh God, how fun is that, okay? So do you ever hold yourself back from an experience that could be fun? Did you ever hold yourself back and say, oh, no, 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 maybe next time? Have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now you need to ask yourself, why did I say no? Well, why didn't I just do it? 
oh no, we can't. You see, we Americans, we come up with more excuses as to why we can't do something and it holds us back versus just exploring and having new life experiences, right? Present yourself with something new. Go to the park districts, go to the universities, take a little class of something, right? And say, you know, well, I've never done this. Well, I think I'm gonna give it a shot. Whatever that might be, right? Okay, all right. Try saying yes to one thing that is a little outside of your comfort zone. So if there's something that came across your table and you went, ooh, initially you're like, ooh, and then you went, oh. <laughs> yeah, right? You see, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. It's like, ooh, yeah, great. Oh, well, oh, let me think about that. You see, here's where we get in our own way, right? We are the ones who are our own obstacles. Get out of your own way, have some life experiences, and have that fun. But again, say yes. Say yes. All right? Now, I love this. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Right? Yes. I just loved this one. I, see, I want to be her on that bike. I, I want to be that, OK? So again, yeah, I mean, and that's one of the caveats too about getting a little bit older. And even my kids will say, wait a minute, Mom, where are you going? You know, I said, well, I'm gonna go do this and blah, blah, blah with friends. And they're like, wait, what, what, wait, where are you going? Yeah, I'll see you in two days, you know, and I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> now they're all grown with kids of their own, but they're like, and they just kind of look at me and they just shake their head. Yeah, see, I said yes, I said yes. All right, all right, so you don't stop playing. All right, so now you ask, so we're gonna start talking about the brain because there's a brain-body connection in all of this, okay? So how does the brain fit in? If you have a healthy mind, you have a healthy life. Healthy body plus a healthy mind equals a happy person, right? It's all working, it's all interconnected, right? So we need to optimize everything that we do in our life, both physically and mentally, okay? So again, it's not just doing, it's also thinking, it's processing, it's managing our thoughts, what we do, what we say, how we think every single day. Now, a lot of times we just do this without really realizing we're doing it, but we do, okay? Now, we already talked about a lot of these points right here, but we talked about we need to exercise, right? How many times a week should you exercise? Three. It used to be three. It's a minimum of five. It's a minimum of five. If you get some movement in every single day, that is ideal, okay? Now, how many of you get five days a week? Ooh, okay, you're my heroes. You are my heroes, okay? Any movement, if you are one day a week or two days a week right now, keep going and maybe start adding a little bit more, okay? But now you need to get aerobic activity in there as well as strength training. You need to build muscle mass because just as we age, we have the ten tendency to lose bone density and muscle mass, okay? And that's normal aging, so we have to kind of replenish it and build that up, okay? Aerobic exercise, you need to get that heart rate going. So if you're going for a walk, speed it up a little bit, okay? Because again, when you speed it up and your heart beats faster and you're a little bit out of breath and taking deep breaths, you're getting oxygen into the blood and it goes through your body and it also goes through your brain. Nine times out of 10, we suffer from oxidative stress, which is not enough oxygen into the brain and you feel mentally tired. Do you ever feel like that? Yeah, you just feel, oh God, I just feel mentally exhausted, right? It's that feeling. So you need to get more exercise and more oxygen and blood to the brain, okay? Five days a week. A heart healthy diet, again, foods from the ground of tree, a bush, or a vine, okay? Eat more of those. And have you heard of the Mediterranean diet? Okay, it, it's that. It's that, and you can Google those online as well. But again, just eat real food. Ask yourself, is this real or is it man-made? Okay, all right. If it comes in a bag or a box at the grocery store, no. Although it's quite tasty, no, no. 
Okay, your sense of purpose, okay? Define your sense of purpose, who you are as a human being and where you are in your life. <laughs> what does that look like for you? No one else can really define that for you. You have to define your purpose and why you are here in this world and what you're going to do with that. Strong social networks of positive and like-minded people. Mental workouts, so we need to stimulate our brain. Maybe I'll test your brains today too. All right. Um, lifelong learning, okay? This is a big one. The brain thrives on new information. It thrives on learning. Lifelong learning and education. So whether you pull up a new article and learn something about a specific topic, or maybe you learn a new word in a different language, one word a day, the brain thrives on it. So you need to keep that brain stimulated, active, and vital. Very, very important, okay? And again, reducing stress, okay? Kind of de-escalate on some days. All right, okay. Now, when we talk about brain fitness and brain workouts, okay, kind of you've heard of like brain games, those types of things, okay. So it's any exercise in a manner that it performs at its optimum capacity. So it's really exercising and stimulating and challenging the brain in such a way that it thinks and concentrates more diligently, okay? And better focus and better concentration, okay? So a mental workout are brain exercises that are designed to keep the brain young, healthy, vital, and alert, okay? Now, in order to decide whether any kind of game, like whether it's a crosswords or Sudoku or checkers, chess, if it is considered a mental fitness workout and healthy for the brain, the activity itself needs to be a mental stretch, okay? So it needs to be challenging. It's gotta make you think a little bit, okay? Because if it's too easy, it's exactly that, okay? It's just kind of mindless kind of an activity then. So it needs to make you focus and concentrate, okay? So there has to be some effort, little effort, okay? Now, it also needs to be new to the brain, novel. So if you keep doing the same thing again and again, it just loses its zest, its, its effectiveness. So you need to change it up and do new things, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, and the last thing, it's, it's not necessarily by definition, but it does need to be fun and interesting to you. Otherwise, you're not gonna do it. I would you agree to that? Yeah, otherwise it kind of gets, oh yeah, I bought Sudoku and I bought crossword puzzle books and all that, and then it's sitting on the table, right? Yeah, okay, all right. So now, brain games, here's a sample, okay? Now, a brain game, a fitness game, for an example, you also want to time yourself once in a while. So if you gave yourself one minute, list as many as you can popular song titles that contain a person's name. Now it sounds a little odd, like what, what? You see, now, did you ever think of doing that before? No, no. so it's novel, it's new, okay? So it's gonna make your brain think in a way that it normally wouldn't. You normally don't think about those things, right? So how many, can anyone name a song with a person's name? Sweet Which one? Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline, oh, good one, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, that was a good one, yeah. Edelweiss. That's my homeland forever. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that, Edelweiss. That's one of the folk songs I sing every morning if I get up the bed to welcome each new day with love. Oh, did you hear that? She sings Edelweiss every morning when she wakes up to enter her new day. That's it's one of the 12 songs. Oh, one of the 12 sing. songs that you sing. Oh my God, one of the 12. Oh my God, there's a dozen, wow, okay. I'm doing yoga. Oh, and yoga, oh my God, okay, you get the gold star. I mean, here, you come up here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that, that's beautiful, thank you. What about another song? Gloria, Penny Lane, Brandy. Yeah, oh my God, there's a lot of them, right? There's a lot of them. So again, write them down, but now as a challenge, 
Now add a time element on there, and how many can you come up with in one minute? Okay, and so if you try it again, maybe as you keep practicing, kind of memory rehearsal, you come up with more in the same amount of time. You see? Okay, make sense? Okay, another one would be list as many as you can words or phrases containing the word home, such as home sweet home, right? Can you think of anything with the home word home? Base. Home base, homecoming, home, home run, home depot. calling home, home, de oh, <laughs> home depot, okay. <laughs> I'm there a lot too. Okay, so see, here's some answers. Yeah, a lot of them of what you said, right? So you just kind of make lists, but you see how it just, it's new, it's novel, it's kind of fun. And this is great just to do with the family, sometimes even when you're maybe in the kitchen making lunch or dinner or something. It's like, oh, honey, by the way, like how many words can we think of? You know, and just start rattling off and just have fun with it. It's just kind of sometimes silly fun, but it is great for the brain. Sounds simple, but it is a good stimulation for the brain. Okay, make sense? Okay, all right, okay. Now, here's another one. Again, in one minute, I add the timing on there. And I add the timing on there, just so you know, is because just with normal aging, as we age, the speed of processing, the so speed at which we process information tends to slow down as we age. That's normal, okay? So maybe in your 60s and 70s, you might need to kind of pause and think, and then you come up with an answer, versus maybe someone who's in their 30s come up with it just like that. You might need a second or two. So the speed of processing information tends to slow down a little bit. So when you put the time frame on the little activities, it actually exercises that piece. See? Okay. So again, list all the animals uh, in the animal kingdom, including birds, beasts, one-celled creatures, that begin with the letter B. So be very specific. Okay? Pick a letter. Pick a letter. There's 26 of them. Pick one. Okay? <laughs> Yeah. In one minute, list the 12 months in alphabetical order. You see, it kind of makes you stop and pause. You're like, ooh, wait a minute, hold on. Let me think, right? So you have to think and concentrate, you see? So now it constitutes as a mental fitness activity, okay? Now another one that focuses on um, pretty much mind, memory, body, movement, it's critical thinking, short-term memory, and memory recall, is that find like geometric shapes or figures like this one or similar to it, okay? You look at it for about one minute, okay? And then you take it away and then you have to draw it from memory and see if you got all the detail. Do you want to try it? Oh! <laughs> all right. Sometimes in my present, I actually make you do it. Okay, I will spare you that today. But again, you look at it for one minute, and then you would just like take it away, and then now I would ask you, draw the picture. And then you bring it back, and then you say, okay, did I get all of the detail? Because a lot of times when we scan things, we just kind of glance without really focus, a, a lot of focus, okay? So we miss things, we miss details, right? Okay, so it's just another good exercise. Okay, all right. Healthy habits equal effective brains and healthy brains, right? So the old adage of use it or lose it, yeah, it does apply. It, it does apply. You've got to keep it healthy, okay? Not just the body. Yes, we do the walking. The walking, everything in correlation is good for the body and the brain. But you also need to do specific activities just directly for the brain itself. Very, very important. Okay? Again, we talked about nutrition, eating real food. Okay? Real food. What you, you are what you eat. You've heard of that as well? That's very true. That is very true. Okay? And if you do indulge in something, I mean, well, then indulge. You know, treat yourself. But you're not indulging seven days a week. Okay? So just balance that out. And again, like we said, make one change, one change will make a difference. And again, research also states that you are never too old to make the changes and have it affect your health and well-being. 
So sometimes we say, uh oh, we're too old, it's too late to change. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can make those healthy changes at any age and it will affect you positively. Okay? We talked about exercising, positive mindset, meaningful and purposeful lives. We want to be able to get up in the morning and say, hey, we're going to take on this day today, right? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it on this way. I'm going to sing Edelweiss. I'm going to sing my 12 okay, songs. Sing together later. Okay. okay, you can sing it. You're going to, you're going to break out into song for us. Okay. Gifts, yes, yes. Shared, not to keep it to ourselves. That's right. That's right. She said we all have a gift, and we need to share it and not keep mm -hmm. it to ourselves. Beautiful. Okay, lifelong learning, mental fitness challenges, aim high, avoid complacency, okay, and avoid settling. Explore new experiences, okay, challenge yourself. Instead of saying no or going, eh, remember we said it's okay to say yes. Say yes. Yeah. I mean, what's the harm, right? What have you got to lose? Maybe a little time, but you never know. You might find a new hobby or a new interest, okay? having positive social connections, and getting ample sleep. How much sleep do you all get? Not enough? OK. As we age, we do require a little less sleep, OK? But you know, versus you know, like teenagers, you know, they sleep half their life away sometimes, right? OK? You actually need more sleep when you're younger, because your brain and your body is still developing, which is why the youth, why they do tend to sleep more, OK? Where as we get older, obviously our bodies and our brains are fully developed and we may not require as much. But get the eight hours of sleep. If you require eight to 10, get eight to 10, but never get less than six. Never get less than six. You want good REM, good solid sleep, at least a minimum of six consecutive hours. That keeps you nice and healthy because during sleep time, that's when our brain and our bodies repairs itself and replenishes itself, okay? So sleep is very important. So laugh often, enjoy life, and when it comes to aging successfully, it's one-third genetics, right? And two-thirds lifestyle factors. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, enjoy the rest of the expo. Thank you very much.